Hello YouTube, this is Bill. Um, after finishing that last video on the Sub 2, I realized I kind of rushed it or I didn't prepare myself enough. I left out quite a bit. So this is part two, part two of Sub 2. So first of all, um, when I played that drum track, that electronic drum machine, the house here, and it was in a, it's in a fairly uh, large um, family room situation, that the place was literally shaking. I was wearing, I had to wear a hearing protection before I made the video. It was, it was just super loud. So I took off the hearing protection to make the video, but it was that loud that, that you have to protect your, your hearing, okay? Um, when I played it back through the iPad that I, that I took the video on, it was just sounded ridiculous. It was just, it just, you just, you just can't experience, um, what I experienced in the, from playing it live. Okay. So, um, a couple of things I just want to go over. First of all, I, I have it facing backwards and I usually don't play that, play like that. The only reason why the sub two is facing backwards is because I want to see that that uh, green meter or the red clip light. Okay, as soon as I'm done with this video, it's going back, turning around the other way. But again, the sub two is has the wonderful option of being able to play it upright like this or on its side. So that's it. That's definitely a plus. Okay. Um, again, your computer speakers trying to reproduce the 37 HC that this, this unit can produce, or the 1,000 watts. It's just not going to happen. And uh, and that goes for headphones, too. And, of course, my cheap iPad microphone doesn't do it justice. And I'm not about to start purchasing high-end microphones for YouTube because I put all my money into live sound uh, equipment as, you, as you're finding out. Okay. Um, you might want to notice that I have a, a pad under the subwoofer and that's even though I'm on carpet here I'm still I just want to raise it up slightly to decouple it from the floor and again that's supposedly to uh, less shake of the the paintings and everything else on the walls when I bought my home theater subwoofer I purchased special uh, feet that did the same same thing and that cost fifty dollars so here I just use some thick foam that I got from one of my purchases, and I, I believe it works the same, okay? So here, here is a summary of basically what the last video was all about. So using the Roland drum pad, I demonstrated the lowest frequency pa pad sound. And the setting was at 11 o'clock, as you can see right there. It's still at 11 o'clock gain. That's where I have it set. And the result was I was able to produce 99 dB at the 11 o'clock setting. And I believe that that tone was so low, that was the sub two giving everything it, it could give at 37 hertz. Okay, and again, I, I can't stress enough how the house was literally shaking. Okay, the array over here um, is at nine o'clock. Okay, so again, there is some some miscommunicate mis confusion on the web how to set this up. You the number one thing you have to learn is how to gain stage. And again, I learned I learned through YouTube myself. There's all kinds of videos about gain staging. So the idea is um, I am playing through a mixer. So the idea is keep my source, which is at only nine o'clock, the speaker, and then the mixer is set at unity and again i have endless headroom i just can't see running out of room and i believe that takes off the stress of this the subwoofer if you set it up properly again people are trying to run this particular subwoofer at one o'clock two o'clock and that three o'clock and that might work on other subs that they're used to but this subwoofer and the gain control is very sensitive and the matchup between the array and the sub Pretty much, uh, I can't go past 12. I mean, 12 o'clock is, is just, it starts to not, uh, it, it doesn't really match up properly. It's just too much bass for the array. So 11 o'clock, 
10 o'clock is really the sweet spot on, on this subwoofer I'm finding, okay? Um, at 11.30, at 12, 12 noon on the, on the game, that's when I did see the clip light. Again, playing a very low, uh, a very low frequency from the drum pad. So again, that, that's, the, that's where I subwoofer is drawing the line. But on the other hand, when I was playing and it was clipping slightly and the clip light was just coming on a little bit, it wasn't staying red, I, I felt it still had plenty of room, okay? But most, most places will tell you, Bose will tell you when you see the red, back it off. But I believe that Bose, all their products have internal protection. So I didn't hear any distortion. If I was playing live, I'm not gonna be sit sitting around looking at, a, at the back of the sub. So unless I hear something sounding horrible, I, I would just keep playing at that volume. And I don't think it would damage anything. But again, I'm setting it at 11. Um, through this test, I, I found out that's where it, anything higher, it's gonna clip. So I'm, I'm not gonna push something like this, okay? The Pro 16, again, people are, are commenting on the web that the, the next model down, the um, L1 Pro 16, that that doesn't clip. Well, that doesn't have a, a subwoofer gauge. It doesn't have the level meter. So again, um, maybe, it, maybe the sub is, would normally be clipping like this one is, but since they can't see that light, they, they are feeling that's a better product. I, I just don't see any way that the sub the Pro 16 can outperform this because this is a larger uh, unit and um, it doesn't, the sub doesn't have the, elect the electronics is separate. So again, physics tells me that this is probably the um, better performing unit. Okay, for the, for the people out there who are, who are you know, claiming this isn't enough, again, in the DJ world, uh, I just want to give an example. There is a one of the top subwoofers out there in this price range is, is the QSC KS118, okay? That's a, it's an 18 inch subwoofer with 3,600 watts compared to this 1,000. And it goes down to 35 Hertz compared to 37 here. And it goes, the max DB is 136 decibels compared to what the sub two can do, which is 128. Okay, so that's an eight, decibel difference. And again, after a little research, one of the things I found out was plus six dB is twice the output. So, and then on top of that, some DJs get two of those. So again, it's it's a ple completely different um, application. I believe the L1 Pro 32 really isn't, I don't think the, the main goal was, was a DJ setup, even though people can use it for, for Maybe, I don't know, 200, 250 people. Again, I'm not sure about those numbers. But I think Bose's whole philosophy was for a musician. And that's where their L1 Model 2 all started. For the, 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 the goal was for each musician to have their own L1 system. And I believe this new Pro Series is continuing their, their, uh, their past experiences. Okay. As a, as a drummer... Again, I found out that kick drums, which is the bass drum, it's EQ'd where the, 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 in the studio, the person doing the recording, they EQ the kick drum at 63 HC hertz, okay? And, or a little above or a, or a little below, and that's called mid-bass punch, okay? And I just read something interesting. They said kick drums in today's music is the new vocal. Okay, so I feel kind of proud that I'm, as a drummer, how important <laughs> the drums are at this point. Okay, so again, the kick drum, that, that bass guitar, that, that's so many modern songs, that's, your, that's what the songs are, are, are based around. Okay. The Sub 2 is more of a musical sub compared to, to something like a QSC brand, branded subwoofer or a more traditional sub. It's very clean, it's super tight, and I would consider it more like a home hi-fi subwoofer, which I have, okay, and I have a lot of experience with those. I might share those in the future. But it's, it's miss, it, some people are saying it's missing that punch, okay? So I guess you can't have both. You can't really have that super tight low end that goes low 37 hertz and, and that 
mid bass punch that a lot of subwoofers that people experience. This one, I, I really don't feel that that that's its strength. I feel that the, the strength is its musicality, its how 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 clean it is and the low end and how low it goes. Because again, that's it's pretty rare for a, a subwoofer in this price range to go down to thirty seven hertz. Okay, when I first tested this system when I bought it, um, I tested it against my previous system, which is the, the Bose L1 Model 2 B2 sub sub combination. And I set, again, I set it up with a mixer and I A-beat it. I was able to A-B it uh, instantly with a, um, with a switch on the, on the mixer. I can, I can mute one and play the other instantaneously. And they both sound wonderful on the high end. The Bose L1 Model 2 B2. I mean, it's just an incredible system after all these years. I would say it's about equal. This one goes louder, but I, I don't need that kind of volume. So I still love the L1 Model 2 B2, but the difference is right here, the Sub 2. When, you, when the Sub 2, when this system kicked in after I muted the L1 Model 2 B2, it sounded like, uh, what's the old expression? Like, like um, you roll down the window, okay? or the expression is night and day, okay? Just, it was that big of a difference. So people on the web are again saying, you know, should I, should I upgrade between my old L1 model um, one B2? And the answer is if you can afford it, th this is incredible, okay? I, ex I, again, I've stated on the web, on some of the forums, that this, to my ears, this is a full range sound. Very similar to audiophile speakers where you have the crystal clear high end and the beautiful mids, again, from the array is the beautiful mids, but then you have this subwoofer that audiophiles will will spend thousands um, to get that, that low end. And of course, your very, very best speakers don't even use subwoofers, they, again, full range, but we're talking speakers that can be up to uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars, okay? One of the great things about the Sub 2 that I don't think I've mentioned is that it's so portable. The form factor, it's thin. Again, you can play it on its side. You can, you can fit this in most cars where the old um, subwoofers, couldn't, you couldn't do that. 52 pounds, it's not a lightweight. I'm not gonna say it is, but it, it's definitely manageable, okay? Other subwoofers that I have, that equal, I would say that equal the performance of this particular subwoofer, they're actually lighter at 42 pounds, okay? But they don't go as low as this. They don't have the, the clarity down low where this thing can produce, you can play backing tracks of your best, your best recorded material. And this will just sound like, like I said, it sounds like hi-fi, okay? Okay, I, I wanna sum it up. Small, it fits in a car. The construction is, I believe it's plastic, but I, there might be wood under it. I'm not sure if someone might want to chime in, but it's built like a tank. It, it's strong. Some people like this, this type of material better than wood because wood chips and scratches so easily. One of the things I, I really love on the pro column is the soft touch control. Right right here, the, uh, the power button. I don't know, it's just really nice. It's not the old... Uh, clunky uh, on and off switch. It's just, you just touch it and it goes on. And of course you have these kind of nice bright lights, very visible. So if you're DJing or you're playing in a dark area, you can see what you're doing. Again, nothing cri nothing critical, but just, just things I, I'm finding I like about the sub. Right here at the bottom is your sub match cable. And to me, that's one of the reasons why Bose is able to charge what they are for this subwoofer. If you buy this subwoofer on its own, it's uh, $1,200, pretty expensive. But the submatch cable, you don't have to use a, another power cable. So you're able to power this and the array with one cable, which is, which is wonderful technology, okay? The sub two automatically, when you use the submatch cable, it automatically matches up the frequencies where the array takes everything from 200 Hertz up and the, and the subwoofer is able to handle everything below. On the con section, I think Bose missed the boat, the fact that they didn't put Bluetooth on this subwoofer. Other companies 
one subwoofer I have in particular, I, I'm going to share that on the, on the web here, is um, Bluetooth control. We're able to control the subwoofer from the audience perspective, and this sub uh, doesn't have it. Maybe in the next model in the future. Okay, my next video I might be able to demonstrate using that second sub, which has more of a punch than this sub, it, but it rolls off at 30, 40 hertz instead of 37. I'm gonna to try to use them both together, lining out from the, from the bottom array here, and we'll see how that sounds, okay? Okay, wrapping up the video, I do wanna mention that I was talking about the QSC KS118, how powerful it is, but you also have to realize it's 104 pounds. So this subwoofer, the sub two, as far as portability, is in a completely different league. I know I can't handle 104 pounds. Okay, I'm gonna play something on the keyboard here just to demonstrate some of the bass frequencies again to wrap it up.